Thank you very much. Uh, so this is, uh, should radiotherapy be included as part of adjuvant therapy? And uh, I will debate against. And I just want to make clear that I'm really speaking about gastric cancer and not about EG junction cancer. This debate will follow and is a different one from classical gastric cancer. And also, I will focus on adjuvant in the sense of post-operative, because certainly, and as uh, David nicely showed, there is a lot ongoing now in the pre-operative field, including radiation therapy, important studies uh, like Top Gear and Critics, uh, Tuber mentioned. So this is not the debate here. Um, a case from last week, just from our tumor board, uh, a diagnosis of signet ring cell gastric cancer um, was presented in a female patient, uh, 58 years old, main location endoscopically in the corpus, uh, diagnosed as CT2ZN0M0. This uh, patient in an external hospital received total gastrectomy with a D2 lymphadenectomy and postoperative histology was PT3 and 2, 5 of 28 lymph nodes involved. Uh, M0, G3, R0. And uh, this is just a picture from this patient. Certainly a situation which you also know from your practice. Uh, the colleagues outside thought it's a T2, N0 based on uh, the investigations they made and uh, went on to direct gastrectomy. And uh, I want to discuss the following things with you. Is there any reason now to give post-operative radiation or radiochemotherapy in this patient. Second, was the decision for primary surgery good? It's not something which is very specific for this topic, but maybe interesting to take a view on that. And what if this patient had received preoperative chemotherapy would then be a role for adjuvant radiation therapy in this high-risk situation? So let's start with any reason to give uh, post-operative radiochemotherapy. Let's take a look first uh, into the ESMO guidelines uh, that were published in 2016. Uh, be aware on the data that were available in 2015, 2016. And in principle, we can say uh, that adjuvant chemoradiotherapy, according to the, uh, to the guidelines in 2016, would be an option, but not the preferred pathway. The preferred pathway in the guidelines would be preoperative chemotherapy surgery, post-op chemo, in anything which is clinically diagnosed as more than T1 and 0. And the non-preferred pathways would be surgery first and adjuvant chemoradiotherapy or adjuvant chemotherapy. And why were the guidelines written like that with adjuvant chemoradiotherapy as an option? Because, as uh, David already mentioned, there is one study that gives, um, uh, uh, that gives justification for that in the Western world, the famous SWOC uh, 9008 or intergroup 0116 study uh, that randomized pa patients postoperatively to receive observation or adjuvant chemo radiotherapy. And uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that at least at that time, adjuvant chemo radiotherapy with this particular regimen was quite toxic, and uh, more than 50% uh, experienced severe hematological toxicity, more than 30% experienced uh, severe gastrointestinal toxicity, and it was not easy to complete that regimen. Only two thirds of the patients were able. Uh, to complete the whole treatment and uh, many stopped for toxic effects or just because the patient had the wish not to continue. Nevertheless, uh, the authors at that time reported improved survival outcomes and here's the big caveat and it was already mentioned by Professor Ilsen, the recommended procedure in that study was that patients receive a gastrectomy plus a D2 lymphadenectomy, but in reality, only 10% of the patients received a D2 uh, lymphadenectomy. And uh, just to, to make you aware, once again, most of you certainly know what is the difference between a D1 and a D2 lymphadenectomy. D1 is when the perigastric lymph nodes at the uh, lesser and the greater curvature are resected, and D2 is when also the lymph nodes along the celiac axis are resected, and with long-term follow-up uh, of the randomized uh, Dutch uh, D2 gastric cancer study, 
uh, we have seen that uh, D2 lymphadenectomy is associated with lower local regional recurrence and lower gastric cancer related death rates, which gives the justification nowadays that patients should undergo a D2 lymphadenectomy. Going back uh, to the study I mentioned, the intergroup study, what happened in the subgroups? Overall, at that time, there was an effect in favor of radiochemotherapy. But when we look at those 10% of patients who received a D2 lymphadenectomy, there was no benefit at all from the addition of uh, adjuvant chemoradiotherapy. And this is the recommended standard in Europe and beyond and should be given to patients. Uh, also, it is uh, important to note uh, that there was uh, no benefit in the diffuse type gastric cancer. Our patient had a diffuse type with signet ring cells, and there was even an indication for a detrimental effect in women presenting with diffuse type gastric cancer. Uh, don't over uh, uh, don't, don't uh, overestimate that it's a small number of patients, but uh, at least it's a caveat. Then going on to the ARTIST-1 study, which is a Korean study that has also been mentioned already. This was adjuvant chemoradiation, not against observation alone, but uh, against uh, uh, regular adjuvant chemotherapy with a platinum compound and capecitabine. This ARTIST-1 study in its overall result was negative. It did not show a clear benefit uh, for the addition of uh, radiotherapy, but subgroup analysis in ARTIST-1 suggested that there may be a benefit for adjuvant chemoradiotherapy in those patients who present with nodal positive disease. You see the subgroup analysis um, outlined here in the forest plot in the lower part of the slide. And I, I find this scientifically very, very clear uh, that the investigators from ARTIST said this is an indication for a benefit for adjuvant chemoradiation in nodal positive uh, patients. Now we have to confirm that. And based on that, uh, they opened the ARTIST 2, uh, 2 study, which was just presented at the ESCO meeting, from which we can learn a lot. It was um, planned to randomize 900 patients who all receive a D2 uh, lymphadenectomy plus gastrectomy, and all patients were obliged to have uh, positive lymph nodes. One standard arm was one year of S1 therapy. Uh, one experimental arm was the combination of S1 and oxaliplatin, and the second um, experimental arm was SOX, which is S1 and oxaliplatin plus radiotherapy. And uh, you have seen these survival curves already. Uh, the worst survival had those patients who received S1 alone, and there is quite similar survival at first glance between those patients who had oxaliplatin and S1 and those who had oxaliplatin, S1, and radiotherapy. You really do not see a big difference, and it becomes even clearer here. This left side curve shows that there is a benefit if you add oxaliplatin in nodal positive uh, gastric cancer patients in the post-operative phase. And the right-hand curve shows that there is no clear benefit if you add radiation therapy. And based on this interim analysis, the IDMC decided to stop this study after recruitment of more than 500 uh, patients and not to go on to the initially planned 900 patients. So uh, there was something else I wanted to discuss briefly. In this patient, uh, you remember it, uh, signet ring cell cancer, CT2, N0, uh, was the decision for primary surgery good? And uh, you know it probably from the discussions in your tumor boards and when you're fighting with uh, your colleagues or debating with your colleagues, uh, there was always an argument over the last year to say, well, in signet ring cell cancer, neoadjuvant therapy does not work so well. And a lot of this uh, skepticism was based on a retrospective analysis from a national French registry um, with a, a good number of patients, but really a post hoc retrospective analysis um, that suggested that patients with signet ring cell cancer who receive preoperative chemotherapy uh, might experience worse outcomes than patients who receive primary surgery alone or primary surgery followed by adjuvant chemotherapy. So this skepticism uh, was uh, certainly um, everywhere around Europe and led many tumor boards to decide against 
uh, neoadjuvant therapy in signal doing cell cancers. Um, it's very interesting that our colleagues from France also put this hypothesis in a prospective randomized trial that was just presented at the ESCO meeting. And uh, they compared perioperative uh, chemotherapy uh, with a primary surgery approach followed by adjuvant chemotherapy. And I'm just showing one of the many results they presented uh, at a poster and poster discussion. It shows at least a trend in favor of uh, the perioperative chemotherapy arm, also uh, more ACO resection rates and a trend in overall survival, although this study is not powered to show that. Uh, so clearly what has been shown previously with the retrospective analysis cannot be validated here and the French investigators themselves said that this is now the proof for them that perioperative um, chemotherapy is the way to go also in patients presenting with signet ring cell cancers. I just wanted to mention that uh, because it's based on the case which I showed to you without mentioning radiotherapy here. But now, going back to the role of radiotherapy, what if this patient had received preoperative chemotherapy, which would be our recommended standard of care according to guidelines and according to the evidence we currently have, at least in the Western world? And here I'm coming back uh, to the CRITICS study or CRITICS-1 study which compared the perioperative chemotherapy approach at that time uh, based on epirubicin, cisplatin, and capecitabine. Nowadays, it would be a FLOT-like regimen, like FLOT or DOC. And they compared that to the same regimen added by adjuvant radiation. And what you can see is that certainly the technology of radiation and the tolerability of radiation in that phase has improved a bit because you do not really see a difference in terms of toxicity and feasibility of the approach if you compare adjuvant chemoradiation with adjuvant chemotherapy. But nevertheless, only two-thirds of patients started with post-operative treatment and only half of the patient completed post-operative treatment. A principal problem of any adjuvant treatment in the Western world, but not specific for adjuvant chemoradiation. Nevertheless, the survival outcomes were disappointing. Uh, the addition of uh, adjuvant radiation in a perioperative chemotherapy concept did not to prove to be of any benefit uh, when we look at survival outcomes and also all subgroup analysis that have uh, been shown thus far do not give uh, any idea that any subgroup may benefit. So I just want to make you aware that if you see a patient who receives preoperative chemotherapy and who presents with critical um, prognostic features postoperatively like positive lymph node status or R1 resection or both, you have now the ERTC 1707 active uh, which uh, randomizes patients to receive the standard, which is continuation of chemotherapy or adjuvant epilimumab, nivolumab. No radiation question in that trial. So my summary, adjuvant radiotherapy for gastric cancer, no. U.S. intergroup study showed efficacy only for inadequately resected patients, and the standard should be a D2 resection, where adjuvant radiation therapy is of no benefit. Also no because ARTIS-2, the Korean study, showed no benefit for radically resected patients, not even in case of a positive nodal status. And a third no, because critics showed no benefit for patients who had received preoperative chemotherapy. I thank you very much for your kind attention.